Hi guys. All right. So we are ten, um, and I am sharing the agenda. Okay, pasting and that. Okay, great. So let me update on some journal clubs. So uh, last time we met, uh, I was talking about the DevoWorm <coughs> group, and we had a presentation from them last uh, Friday, um, well, Friday the 12th, I should say. Um, and I think that went quite well. Uh, folks are talking about their approach to doing development the Worm and understanding how it works. So um, if you didn't get a chance to see it, check out the YouTube video on that, um, as it is now up and archived. Um, we are still working to schedule the math-related journal club. Um, we had some scheduling snafu uh, come up with that, so that is uh, currently not uh, not yet scheduled, but uh, watch out for that one, and uh, I'll move forward with that. As well, um, some um, updates. We did get a group together um, to talk about um, talk about lens uh, and uh, some different uh, neuromal modeling things. And uh, since Rainer and Porig are both here, I'll let them cover the updates on that stuff uh, when they speak individually. But uh, that was good. Um, I have been uh, talking with some folks about uh, real-time chat and uh, whether or not uh, we can put an archive on IRC. There's an issue on that that's been floating around. Um, and I know that we kind of have gone back and forth on this a lot. We lost Stephen. Looks like it. Oh dear. It's not good. Um, okay. Uh, is he here? He's still on the agenda. And then he's still logged in, so. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I guess wait a moment for him to reconnect or something. Hope That's he can get back good. on. Here he goes. Um, that was on you. Eh, uh, Hangout just 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 went offline and then came back on. So uh, that okay. was strange. Okay. Anyway, I was trying to say something about real time chat uh, before I drop. So um, there is an IRC channel on uh, SnooNet, uh, which is used by Reddit uh, for OpenWorm. It. Uh, um, there's also a Hangout that we have uh, used amongst some of us, but it's also uh, hard for other folks to find it. So folks from outside do want to do some real-time chat, and uh, a, a contributor named Travis Jacobs has been kind of trying to help us find that. And um, so we've applied for an archiving. Um, there's, a, there's a website that will archive IRC channels for you, um, but they are only do it for, uh, they only do it by request. I've sent in a request to, to have that on IRC, um, on our OpenWorm IRC channel on SNUNET. So if uh, hopefully that works, then it will be a bit more appealing to uh, to do that because then the transcripts will be saved and other people can use it and search it. And that so uh, that's another thing that's going on. Uh, if anybody has any suggestions for a better real-time chat system or a better way for us all to be kind of in touch, let me know. There's this issue I've been sort of fleshing out online, just looking at different alternatives and options amongst Slack and HipChat and IRC and Google Hangout. If any others have had to be less coming up. Um, but they all sort of seem to have their own pros and cons. Uh, um, OK, let's see. I don't think of anything else. I was doing work over the weekend on PyOpenWorm. Um, and maybe I'll just give my update, my individual update on that. So um, we have uh, now improved uh, the alpha API, so it doesn't require you to use generators every single time that you go to call anything out of it. And I thank um, uh, Mark Watts, the GSOC student, who is officially off, but uh, unofficially has uh, been improving 
has been improving that branch anyway. So thanks to him for that. And then I had a look at the actual data um, behind the scenes, and I found some glitches. And so this has motivated me, though, to write some unit tests that specifically ensure that the data are of high quality. So there are now data integrity tests in my branch um, that I am writing as a way to sort of suss out um, to make sure that the data are all there and to make sure the data are all referenced um, that uh, will get run by Travis every time that the library is updated. So even if somebody goes and, say, deletes a neuron, from the database, we would know uh, the test would sort of like, stand up and complain that, hey, there is a missing neuron. So I think that's actually going to be a good practice for us. But bottom line, we're still not turned over to master yet. Um, the, I'm, I, I would really very much like to turn it over to master, but um, when you can't ask a neuron if it's a motor neuron or an inner neuron because there's a data glitch, then it's probably going to be worse than what they're mastering today. So, um, so that's getting fixed. But yeah, I put in, yeah. Um, many hours over the weekend on that, and that is uh, still going. Uh, want to remove the roadblock, um, but uh, but that is at least progress so, on that stuff. So um, so that's moving forward quite well. Um, we have uh, also, um, I'll, you know, I'll let I'll let Giovanni talk about most of the the Kickstarter stuff, but the part that involves me is the uh, Academy, and. Um, I uh, so I thank so we I thank the folks who volunteered uh, for giving lectures. Uh, Oregon Balash, I apologize for <laughs> appearing to jump the gun uh, on on today's lecture. I got a little bit confused about the schedule, um, but uh, we will have them lecturing later. Um, this a lot of this is happening behind the scenes because it's mainly either going to backers of one or the other reward. Um, but uh, as, uh, as the course wraps up, we'll be exploring how to open it up to more and more folks. But we are on the seventh live lecture, and I believe the third lecture to the uh, spectators uh, has gone out now um, in terms of materials that are out there. So folks are watching them, and feedback so far is good. And uh, so we're making our way through that. And um, uh, so I just wanted to let you know about that part of things that are going on. Um, and I've been continuing to uh, take on additional the project and point them to different things. Um, probably see lots of activity of forks, uh, folks forking different repos. Uh, feel free to reach out to folks even on GitHub uh, who fork things and see if they have any questions or something like that. Help me with uh, folks that post on the mailing list. As, as you, uh, but uh, yeah. I think those are the main updates for now from me. So let's uh, let's start off uh, this time with uh, with Andre, who we uh, uh, I haven't heard from in a little bit, and I'm just curious how things are going. I'll start with you. Okay. Uh, well, during the last um, period of time, which was quite large. Um, I focused on collecting various uh, data, reading papers about nervous and sensory uh, systems of C elegance because, well, in my opinion, it's now quite a uh, very important task. Uh, and well, since we have already uh, a kind of warm body, muscles, and so on, working somehow, uh, but, mm, well, it seems that it's a good time to start uh, making some uh, kind of working nervous system, at least some uh, circuits um, attached to it, uh, making it uh, kind of alive. So I'm sharing a link um, to a document where I have um, listed uh, all, all the majority of data which I have found and compiled uh, with the links um, to sources. Well, every uh, value seems quite important and I hope will be very useful in our further research and modeling. Well, do you want to walk us through it at all, a little bit, just like for a couple minutes? Um, 
you mean to um, to explain, uh, to give some examples and so on? Yeah, yeah, just for a few minutes. Oh uh, well, um, is it a good idea to share a screen? Yeah. Okay. Seems to work. Okay. Uh, so well, uh, quite a lot of attention was paid to uh, Connectome. Uh, a lot of uh, papers uh, in the beginning, especially in the beginning, say that oh, well, C elegance is the uh, only animal for which Connectome is known for 25 years and so on. Um, well, of course, that's not true, uh, and uh, now we have kind of numer numerical uh, characteristic of uh, its completeness. It's about 90%, uh, according to data uh, received, well, in 2011, uh, three years ago. Uh, there is no more uh, earlier data with such estimation, but all. Um, that's quite good. 90% uh, is well, quite quite significant amount of data, but still we need to know this and to be sure that Maybe maybe some important circuits uh, may not work because they are just absent. Mm. Well, uh, next I was sure that uh, every uh, path between two uh, adjacent neurons is very important uh, because of the length of uh, the path, uh, which signal needs to pass when going from one neuron to another. Um, so I focused then uh, on collecting the data regarding uh, the velocity uh, of signal propagation hmm. in a uh, Sergeant's uh, nervous system. Well, it's uh, specific because it lacks uh, action potentials is well known, uh, especially in, among uh, our team. Uh, it's because of uh, absence of uh, voltage gives it, uh, oh, I don't know how it is in English. Voltage gate line channels? Sodium uh, okay. uh, channels, yeah. Um, Okay. Uh, they are absent even in the genome of C. elegans, uh, and well, electrophysiological records also uh, prove the same. Uh, so there are two quite important uh, formulas which were received quite uh, long ago. Uh, I'll try. To to yes, no, that's in okay. in to increase the magnification. Uh, Thank you. What is wrong? Ah, the size was wrong. Yes. Uh, okay. So uh, here is one of them. Uh, it is called the uh, length constant, uh, and it shows um, how much. Uh, distance uh, signal can pass until it will decay for a value of 67% uh, from the initial value. Uh, it depends on the membrane uh, resistance and exoplasm uh, resistance and of course the diameter of the uh, process. Um, so, 
Uh, this values are unknown for uh, C elegans, but for other uh, nematodes which have larger uh, size and larger neurons, uh, their values are mm, measured. And well, there are some evidences that can estimate C elegans values with those values. So if you can, if you use them and they receive the value of this constant uh, from 0 0.3 to 1.5 uh, millimeters. Uh, here it is. Um, and well, that's quite good because um, Seligan's uh, processes um, are usually, well, they, they can uh, can be up to one millimeter or even a bit uh, longer. Um, so, theoretically, uh, being inside this interval of length constant, we can have values which allow the signals to uh, pass this uh, distance and still uh, keep the ability to reach, for example, some uh, chemical synapse uh, and to um, cause uh, mediator uh, release and excitation of the uh, postsynaptic cell. Okay, and next uh, next value seems even more important for me. Uh, this one uh, is the velocity of uh, propagation of the signal. Oh, well. Um, to estimate uh, this, we additionally need uh, the capacity of the uh, membrane uh, of the cell. Well, interestingly, it has um, the same value for all. Um, For all uh, neural and muscular uh, fibers, for every, uh, for a lot, for a variety of various species, uh, and it has value. Oh well, very convenient to navigate for all this. Uh, one uh, microfarad uh, per uh, square uh, centimeter. It's universal constant. So when we use it. Uh, and calculate this value, we get uh, values from 7 to 35 millimeters per second. Mm. So even at the slowest uh, variant, uh, the signal can pass through the uh, from the beginning uh, to the end of the warm body uh, during uh, less than one tenth part of the second. So quite very fast. Uh, usually my uh, intuitive uh, expectation on this was that signals mm, in C elegance propagate quite slowly. Um, so I was quite quite wrong about this. Uh, so we don't have action potentials, but still uh, all the processes uh, go quite uh, fast in elegance, which allows it to react uh, quite fast uh, for some mm, internal uh, signals, uh, for example, like gentle touch uh, signal, uh, which, uh, uh, so uh, I think everybody knows that uh, if um, elegance uh, is being uh, it, if we uh, touch um, salience with, uh, for example, uh, uh, usually in experiments, uh, people use uh, uh, eye dash uh, because it's very thin to touch this worm. Uh, I mean, mm, or oh, uh, hair, uh, just one single uh, fiber. Yeah. It's um, well, the force is very uh, small during uh, this. It's uh, 0 0.1 uh, micronewtons, 
um, this is the lowest force which can be uh, perceived by uh, say again, uh, the lower threshold of the force. Um, if we uh, look, for example, at um, okay, I will give a link now. Very very short video fragment. Um, here it is. Uh, the worm reverses each um, moment. It was uh, moving forward. Uh, I put the link into the chat. Um, so after touching it, uh, it reverses its direction, and it happens. Uh, I, I performed. Uh, I split uh, the video into uh, single frames and analyzed uh, how the center of mass moves. Um, and uh, I detected the moment of the uh, touch of the worm. So only uh, half, not, not half, quarter of the second is necessary for the worm to reverse its uh, movement. So it means that uh, nervous processes uh, even uh, make this uh, decision and uh, rebuild the commands sent to motor neurons even faster. So everything uh, goes very quick. And well, in some mm, quite good approximation, we can not take into account the length of all these paths. For example, between one neuron in the head and one neuron in the tail. Just one point, uh, oh, 0 0.1 second and the signal will be, will be there. Uh, so, quite a lot of other um, values uh, which can be used for such calculations. And, of course, uh, if anybody has uh, another valuable information which may be related somehow to all these processes, it would be nice to uh, supplement this list uh, with them and so on. Uh, so, with uh, all this done, I got quite significantly better understanding of what processes take place in the against nervous system. Uh, a lot of questions became more clear for me, and I hope sharing this will help uh, the team also to uh, get some uh, new knowledge. Oh, <laughs> Maybe everybody knows it uh, without this, but I hope it will be useful. Yeah, this is really great. I mean, this is uh, exactly the type of uh, uh, figures that we need to actually stretch out and put into uh, some of the uh, neuromel models, for example. Um, and I mean, you can even in theory test things like um, propagation velocity and electronic distance using some of the neuromel models. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, it's great to have it in one place and. Uh, to be able to test these after um, come back to these figures and just test them against some others. Agreed. I've gone ahead and uh, and shared the spreadsheet in the um, in the OpenWorm uh, public folder under biological details, so uh, that we can uh, remember where it is. So just in case anybody loses track of it, uh, you can find it there. This is awesome. All right, we should move on uh, to get through everybody. But uh, sounds like a productive several weeks, Andre. Bravo. Thanks. So uh, let's see. Um, I'm just looking uh, left to right here. Uh, let's go ahead with uh, with Giovanni. Hey guys. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and share some of my recent um, activity. I'm just looking for myself on the other end there. Okay. So, mainly two uh, broad topics. One of them is things related to the Kickstarter's aftermath, and partially that's been covered by Stephen in terms of the Oklahoma Academy. There's another couple of things that are still going on. Um, one of the things that I'm currently um, looking after is the Adopt a New One. Uh, campaign that we launched for Buckers to be able to um, name C. elegance new words. And um, 
I'm just going to share something with you. Um, this is something that's happening um, as you speak. Uh, we're preparing certificates for people uh, they receive. And then I sent an email today to Podrick uh, about um, help or uh, pretty much uh, whatever I'm going to show you. Uh, tag neurons with the backer selected names. Um, and uh, once we have these two things done, um, we'll pretty much uh, email the backers saying this is your certificate, and you can see how your name has been associated to the neuron in, uh, in our model of the Celebrate Neuron Network. Um, Did they choose which neurons, or have we signed them? Sorry? Did they get to choose which neuron they wanted? Uh, whoever wanted to, to choose, uh, choose uh, chose, but uh, some of them didn't actually care about the choice. And the people, people who didn't care, uh, we just signed one randomly, like a uh, But other people knew which one they wanted. So I'm just going to show you an example of uh, what we are preparing at the moment. So this is the certificate they're going to receive. Um, and this is a bit of a... <laughs> Who's that guy? That guy. It's a guy from Star Trek, <laughs> as you know. <laughs> 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 because he pledged for our Kickstarter, so... Uh, and uh, so he's getting a certificate. He also picked uh, one of the years. So this is an example of what the certificate would look like. Um, the, the wording is up for review if anyone wants to propose any changes. But um, Matteo uh, designed the certificate because, it's, as you know, it's good with graphics. Um, so this is just a preview of what it looks like. And they're not out yet, but uh, pretty much everybody who pledged for Adopt a New Road will get one of these. They'll get an email explaining where they can find their name in our uh, C Elegance uh, neural network model, and um, and so forth. Uh, so that's just an example of what it looks like. And it says the name of the neural they picked. Um, this is their name that they picked for the neuron. So in this case, it happens to be the same as the guy. Um, that's an example. So, Podrick, uh, um, in terms of um, Providing an example of where it would be the best place to uh, place this in the UML, um, I think I'm just going to see two stuff. Um, okay, yeah. Um, just one quick question first. Uh, did he actually, or is he actually one of the uh, people who's adopted a new one? Yeah, yeah, he is. Did he no, actually didn't say? Work. Did he actually say uh, CA one? Uh, I need to go back and check that. I okay. definitely uh, signed up for it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's a window rather than the, um, the elegance. But um, uh, in terms of actually putting this into C302 or the neural bell, um, longer term, the best place to actually put this is probably in high open room. Uh, mm -hmm. And then uh, C302 and neural bell can pull it from uh, high open room and um, then it's, it's much easier to get into uh, neural now. Uh, the simplest thing in the short term is probably just to provide a simple file with uh, name of person, name of neuron, and then I can, well, name of neuron against name of person, mm -hmm. and then I can just uh, incorporate that into the Python scripts. And when it's generating the neural now, there'll probably be a uh, text field or an annotation, something in the notes, which says adopter uh, or owner. Mm -hmm. That's already yeah. available. It's already a spreadsheet, so uh, I just yeah. didn't want to kind of uh, offload any work to you. I was just um, asking you for a way to do it. But if you, if that's easy for you, then I can I can provide the spreadsheet. Yeah, I mean, yeah, either a spreadsheet or just a text file, wherever you can do the yeah. main source of that. Um, and then it's easy to put it into the generated neural map. And then in Gepetto. Uh, best thing is to just pull out this field or pull out this annotation, and then uh, it'll be the same for any new ML model. When you click on it, you look for the notes in there. Um, uh, it's probably better for the main notes, but um, there can be a, a custom properties fields 
uh, as I say, in the doctor. And, um, uh, you can just pull that out, and, and once Geppetto finds that, it, will, it should know that, okay, well, this is something special, then I, I like this, or make it bold. So uh, once it's in there, I'll let you know, and uh, Geppetto can do whatever it wants with it then. Okay. And then we can uh, um, maybe regenerate that in the uh, multi-departmental slides. Yeah, yeah. They'll, be, they'll be hidden somewhere. So we test them first with C32. Good. So, so moving on, uh, what has gone on? Yeah, uh, so we're organizing the open one week for November. Um, I, I can say it's safe to say that we can announce that um, the dates that we picked were are from the 4th to the 6th of November included. And um, we're going to have some uh, open sessions. Uh, so everybody who's around will be invited to join. Um, some selected dates. Uh, we're still uh, finalizing the agenda. Uh, but yeah, it's in London. Uh, UCL, Patrick is uh, helping organize that uh, UCL, so thanks a lot for that. Um, we're currently planning logistics. But yeah, it's happening. It's safe to say that uh, we got the, the rooms confirmed. Thanks, Patrick, for that. And uh, we, It's the second year that we managed to do the retreat. And hopefully we can keep it up uh, as a tradition. Um, but exciting, exciting news. Um, when we know more about the actual agenda, then we can, we can start running around. Um, so that's also for the start stuff. Uh, in terms of uh, actual coding work, kind of design and software stuff, I've been spending my time working on the Worm Sim, um, which is the Worm in the Browser um, project. And we have an open Worm. And uh, there's a lot of development ongoing in terms of infrastructure, and um, Matt uh, also is involved on that. And um, it's a, there's a big overlap with Geppetto stuff. And we usually go in more deeply about that in the Monday meetings of Geppetto meetings. We go, all the developers are there and kind of over uh, feature by feature what's been done. Um, but in terms of high level um, flow, I can show you um, something that I put together last week that's coming out of the, the use cases. Um, so there's two main things that are being worked on at the moment for the world. And one is the, is, is in terms of coding, there's a lot of infrastructure coding that uh, is uh, decoupled by from the use cases. And then there's, we're working on defining use cases. And then, um, Based on the use cases, I put together an uh, application flow that I presented last week, last Monday at the Geppetto meeting. I can briefly show it here. And um, that's available for everybody to see uh, on GitHub. I posted it on the GitHub issue. Um, just trying to share my screen. This thing is not, not working. <laughs> I'll just Post it and maybe Stephen, you can share it. That's the issue. Um, and I embedded a, um, a flow, an activity diagram in there. Um, um, unfortunately, I'm, I can't seem to be able to share my screen. Fine again. Maybe. Almost there. I think it's working now. Got it. There we go. Oh, you got it as well. Okay, so we have to we have to screen share as well. Uh, so anyway, that's uh, supposed to be high level um, worm sim uh, activity diagram of what's going to go on in the application, and um, anybody can see this from um, the GitHub issue. And the issue was create flow diagram, and it's on the worm sim repository. Um, so there was some feedback from Michael. I created a new version. Um, so anybody who's interested, it's fairly simple. I, I don't want to take too much time by walking through step by step here. I did that on Monday at the other meeting, and it's more kind of focused on development itself. But um, if anybody's curious, know more about 
what the one music, uh, one music application is going to look like. Um, this is a good place to start, and you can ask questions there. Also, there are um, use cases uh, that have been drafted as you speak. So this is all um, balloons. A balloon represents a use case. This is all ongoing work. Pulling this into a Google Doc that I want to make available uh, very soon. Working on this stuff with uh, Stephen Macher and Matt. Um, so it's a collaborative effort. And uh, I'm, as I said, I, we have the stuff. We're pulling this stuff in, and fleshing them out with details for each of these balloons. Um, and this, uh, I'll, I'll make it that, uh, available on a Google Doc. And I will, there's a GitHub issue for that as well. That's when, that's where you'll see it pop up. So this stuff is pretty much uh, what I've been keeping myself busy uh, a couple of weeks. Um, so that's all for me. If there's no questions. Well, any questions? No, that's good. Thanks. Let's go on to you, Porik. OK. Um, I haven't got a huge amount of updates, apart I've just sort of been occupied with various things to do with um, newer ML and LEMS and getting a, a new release out of, uh, a new stable release out from ML and LEMS. Uh, that's pretty much released now. So the um, development code in the um, GitHub repositories has been copied up to master, but uh, I haven't announced it just yet um, uh, in the paper for describing newer ML and lens uh, is available, but uh, it's not in its final proof stage. So um, once that's out and all the repositories are updated and the documentation updated, I'll announce it on the list. Uh, but for anybody using the development version of this new it's just going to continue. Um, I've been doing a little bit of trying to get uh, gap junctions implemented. Uh, there's a, a little bit of some repositories from uh, Merge. Uh, some tests that Robert Cannon has been doing with that junction, which they need to pull into the um, developed version. But um, that's hopefully in the next week. We can think of that in the next week or two. Uh, the other thing I've been looking at is the muscle model uh, for from Boyle and Cohen. Um, so thankfully, um, we've got the, whole, uh, the original code for that in C++ and MATLAB is now available on the muscle model uh, repository uh, on OpenWorm. And that can run. Uh, you can rerun the um, uh, genetic algorithms that um, produced the optimized model. And there's also some MATLAB code on there which can reproduce and with the traces, which is very useful. Um, and using some of that and uh, just implementing it in neural neural lens, I've managed to convert most of the um, published model to uh, neural neural format. So now it will run in uh, JNeuroML. Um, I believe it can run in the uh, Neuron version as well. Um, but the uh, good thing about this now is that it's a full spiking-ish model, um, which contains realistic uh, ion channels and internal calcium, and can be used as basis for some of the um, uh, neuronal models also. Um, this is the work to do just to make sure that all the parameters are correctly brought over from the um, paper and from the original code, but um, it will form solid for uh, both the muscle cells and um, the neuron, uh, the neurons themselves. Um, it's it, to actually incorporate these into the network. Um, we'll need uh, support for gap junctions and graded synapses in uh, neuronal, which should come in the next few weeks. But um, yeah, it's it's getting there. Impressive. That's awesome. Um, and I that. Yeah, I'm still meaning to look again at uh, Cybernetic. Um, I have had it working on my laptop and have uh, drilled down into the Python scripts that um, uh, my father was using for uh, interacting between uh, Python and Cybernetic. And then D302 and um, uh, maybe some of these models are a bit more up to date. Um, I will try to um, eat something from some of these simulations into Cybernetic to see how, how that goes. Cool. Awesome. Thank you um, for my part, uh, just on behalf of the folks that uh, sort of have questions on the on the lens and RML2 stuff, and, and thank you for driving stuff forward on that. Uh, 
I think we had a really good productive session. Uh, and uh, I think uh, we're doing some good community building then, you know, in terms of like driving the requirements for, um, you know, for the standards. So, uh, so thank you for, for getting those pieces of all forward and providing guidance to, to folks like Rainer and Ari. Very, very nice. Awesome. Okay, and let's go to Rainer then. Hi. Hello. Um, okay, I think uh, Poreg just um, just covered most of the work on the muscle cell modeling over the last weeks. And so, yeah, many thanks there for uh, implementing a lot of the stuff that we, we need for that. Um, now we've got uh, Oil and Cohen's simulation code and Poreg's work on implementing calcium channels in uh, in LEMS. We're a lot closer now to being able to replicate figure two from the Boyle and Cohen paper, which is the uh, current and voltage clamped muscle cells and their behavior. Um, so yeah, once we're once those are we've got those behaving as expected, we can then move on to implementing a synapse and, and stimulating the muscle cell using that. And yeah, that's, that'll be the next step along the way to getting a full physical model of the muscle cells and, and neuromuscular junction. So yeah, uh, thanks to Pareg for that. <laughs> uh, that's, that's actually got us a lot closer to where we need to be. <laughs> Yeah. Definitely. And you and I should probably set up another another time to, to go through the next thing, yeah? Yes. Yeah, we'll do. <laughs> yeah, I think Excellent. that's about all I can say at the moment. <laughs> no worries. No, it's good. It's good. Cool. Okay. So then, last but not least, Sergey. Hi, everybody. Uh... Uh, most of my work was uh, joined with uh, cybernetic documentation and so on. And uh, I finished with uh, documentation of code. Uh, it could be found in development branch and master branch of cybernetical. So it's uh, I merged it last updates with uh, worm body simulation branch. So, uh, also, I'm working on uh, web documentation uh, where I plan uh, describe the main uh, data structure and their evolution through, this, through the simulation. And also, I plan to uh, describe the main uh, uh, algorithms and so on. Uh, and uh, also, I plan add this documentation uh, to Gepetto and so that's all I think from me. Cool. All right, very good. And uh, uh, let's see, I believe his name was Dan from yesterday. Uh, I know Dan uh, yeah. is uh, somebody who potentially could play Similar role that you do, and you both speak Russian, so that could be a plus. Um, yeah, we, so. we we connect with him tomorrow evening. Okay. Yes, uh, and we, he tried. He he said me that he tried uh, repro uh, reproduce a uh, bug which I have on my machine, on his own machine, and uh, we we'll see what's the result. Okay. Cool. All right. Very good. So, uh, all right, guys. So I think we kind of went through the rounds here. Uh, very good. Thanks. Uh, thanks, and sorry for the uh, schedule change. Um, so we will uh, we'll try to stick to Wednesday as usual. But this time, I unavoidably had a flight planned, and some of the folks had some holidays as well. Um, so try to move it to make it a bit more convenient. Um, but uh, we will see you guys again in two weeks. And I think if there's anything, does anybody want to say anything else for the sort of the good of the order? Here before we uh, break. 
Uh, well, I just one question about uh, that uh, paper, um, perspectives paper. Oh, yeah. uh, are there any news on this? Um, uh, well, uh, perspectives. That, that yeah. Perspectives paper. Yeah. I I, um, I pinged uh, Balash uh, last last week on it. He had uh, he had sent the response. Uh, to the second reviewer, the second time, right? Uh, yeah. And uh, as far as we know, the ball is still in the court of the second reviewer uh, to get back to us. So mm. we are waiting. We are waiting for that reviewer to, to respond to our latest response to him. Uh, that had a more extensive explanation of, uh, of what data we were using and uh, how we were representing it. So that's the okay. latest I heard. And I, I'd expect that, yeah, Balash would probably have messaged us if he had heard anything back. So I think we're just we're just waiting on, on that review. But, uh, Great, thanks. It is, ball is in their court. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, that's another thing. You and I, Andre and Sergey, down again with our paper about that. So I've, I haven't responded to uh, your mail. Yes, yeah, sure. All righty. Very good, guys. Well, um, I will see you guys in two weeks, and uh, awesome progress. Okay. Uh, have a great time. Take care. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thanks.